Yo, call somebody, text somebody, slap the shit out of somebody. Let them know that Rodian Radio is live up in this biatch. biatch, biatch. You got it locked on Rodian Radio. Yeah, Dr. Dre is in full effect, and I gotta tell y'all a little something. Easy E is down with us. MC Ring, you know he's down with us. DJ Yella is down with us. Arabian Prince, you know he's down with us. Tony A. The Wizard is down with us. JJ Fag is down with us. Timmy T, you know he's down with us. DJ Pooh Boy is down with us. Toddy B and Spade, they're down with us. My boy Ice Cube, you know he's down with us. I like to mention, so pay attention to where I'm from. Compton, but the tapes are from the rodeum. My name is Dre, listen while I play. And by the way, I'm also down with NWA. Yo, Steve at the rodeum is down with us. Slang and funky tapes, it is a must. We're number one. one, one, one. Tony A. Am I live, Johnny? Yep. I'm live. Hey, everybody, welcome back to Rodium Radio episode 80. And uh, for some reason, Johnny, I'm getting a little bit of feedback, so I don't know if it's the, the mics are on on the cameras again. So, but other than that, everybody, if you can hear me, um, go ahead and check that out, Johnny. Let me know. No, okay, we're good. Okay. Anyways, everybody, uh, welcome back to Rodian Radio episode 80. And uh, before we get started and I introduce my special guest, let me go ahead and give a couple of announcements. Some people have still been DMing me and asking me, uh, can I still give to the Chicano Rap Documentary uh, donation? And I said, yes, absolutely. You can find it on my bio, you can find, on, find it on the description, or you can find it on my Facebook bio as well. Uh, so you can still give. The incentives are still the same. I encourage you to go to documentary.com and uh, look at the incentives that you would get uh, uh, if you give a certain amount. Other than that, the Rodian Mixtape Classic uh, Mixtapes are still available. Uh, four for 30, you can go to documentary.com and get, get them there. Uh, four of them, once again, were made, uh, mixed by me. The other four were mixed by Dr. Dre, and we got other ones coming out soon. Uh, soon, we will be start filming the Chicano Rap documentary. We're gonna start with B-roll footage, but you know what, enough of that. Let me go ahead and introduce my very special guest, Carolyn Rodriguez. Hi. How you doing? I'm doing great, how about you? You know what, I'm doing really, really good. Um, this morning, I, I almost like got up like if I didn't get enough sleep. Mm -hmm. I'm one of those guys that like, I go to sleep late, but I wake up early, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes two o'clock, get up at six. Yeah. Uh, why that happens, I don't know. And then, but sometimes you still get these tweakers that are still lighting fireworks. So you tend to wake up around <laughs> two, three o'clock anyways. But uh, other than that, how was the drive coming over here? Um, it was good, actually. It wasn't yeah. bad. It's pandemic traffic, so it's not as bad as like regular traffic. Now, I, I know you, you live in Texas, but you come out here frequently. Mm -hmm. uh, um, how is the traffic compared to Texas? LA traffic compared Oh yeah, Texas, nothing compares to LA traffic, nothing. Not one thing compares to it. There's just so many ways to get everywhere. Like in Houston, you can go to like four different highways to get somewhere. Okay. We have loops and, and, and freeways and cross freeways and more loops and beltways and tollways. And it's just like, there's so many places to go. I mean, it's flat, it's flat there. Flat. It's not like hills, mountains over here where everything's like on a curve or okay. on a hill. It's the area is so flat that you just have so many side streets. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, like out here, uh, one of my friends, I've got a couple of buddies that live in um, uh, San Antonio. And then there's a little on the outskirts of San Antonio. I think there's a place called Pleasanton. Mm -hmm. uh, and they come out here every once in a while. But when they see the traffic bumper to bumper to bumper, like it's, to them, it's unbelievable. Yeah. You know, <laughs> It's unbelievable. Uh, I've gone to visit my friends that live in New York. And when we go through Times Square, it's almost the same thing. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's incredible. But uh, oh, what is one thing let me ask you, that you do like about coming out here at LA? Well, I lived here for like five, six years. Really? So I'm technically still like a resident of California. Okay. Because I plan on moving here. That's how much I love living in LA. Like I want to move here mm -hmm. um, whenever my husband gets out. That's where I want to come. So I am still a California resident. I'm out here like every month. I mean, I guess the most I would like about it is 
somebody asked me that, you know, like uh, probably the most, the most that I like about it. And I would say that everybody that I know that came here when I came here, that I was around was here chasing a dream. And this is the place where you chase your dreams as far as anything in the entertainment industry, whether it be music or acting. I mean, you know, this is where Hollywood is, this is where this is entertainment capital. So that's the one thing that I loved about it is that everybody understood, like everybody's like you, like they're just out here trying to make something, you know, not trying to make something happen. And a lot of them are from LA, they're from all over, but they're just, they've been living here like trying to make something happen. And I've seen so many people that come from different cities, not just, you know, Texas or whatever, or that even come out from out here that have blown up and made it. And it's like, wow, I remember when they were like sleeping on a couch or there were six of them to an apartment, you know what I'm saying? So it's, we're on the same page. That's, that's how I feel. There's more people that I can relate to out here. So, so mm -hmm. you, you know, it's funny because I've had friends that uh, live in, you know, in different, uh, outside of California. Mm -hmm. And they see me doing this podcast now. And they always tell me, man, you have so much access to all the artists because they all live over here. Uh -huh. You know, it goes out here, like it could be, whether it be Minnesota or whether it was, it could be in Florida. It goes, all, all the guys are out there over here. We don't, we're only so limited. Yeah. You know? And I said, yeah, you know, it's, it's true because uh, for an example, I was sharing with you just when you got here about these mixtapes. Mm -hmm. uh, I was 19 when I met Dr. Dre at the Swamp Meet. You know, it's almost like a story. It's like, uh, uh, it, it's hard to imagine that you could actually meet the billionaire, probably the, the biggest hip hop producer ever yeah. at the Swamp Meet, you know. I met Easy E there, Ice Cube there, and I met all these guys there and I had access to them. So I'm very thankful and fortunate to uh, been raised here so it's not a bad yeah. place to live mm -hmm. but we do pay for the weather oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah so. it's expensive out here i mean to me i always say you get what you pay for yes so that's what you pay for is the weather that's what i always say i'm yeah. like oh no you pay for this <laughs> yes no absolutely so 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 now uh, uh now let me ask you this uh were you always raised in uh if i'm correct houston texas no no i'm not from there okay um i was born in durham north carolina and then when i was very small we moved to fayetteville so i was actually raised in fayetteville and okay. i was there until i was a teenager mm -hmm. and then my parents split up and my mom went to arkansas my dad went down to huntsville texas which was like north of houston so i stayed with my mom for like a year and a half i couldn't take it anymore as soon as i was old enough to leave i left and i went down to huntsville because my dad taught at a college there and that's how i ended up in Houston. Hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. so he, he was a, a teacher. Yeah, he's a professor at the college in Huntsville where I went, and I decided to go to college there so I could get in-state tuition. Right. And then that's when I started listening to the radio station in Houston, and I started going to Houston, and I was like, "Wow, I love Houston. This is gonna be. This is like my home. I'm wow. gonna move here." Now, if you don't mind me asking, what, what, what did you? What did your dad teach? Spanish. Spanish. Mm -hmm. Now, are you fluent in Spanish? Sí, si. hablo español. See? Si? Mm-hmm. Wow, that's that's dope. Yeah, that's I, dope. They taught me Spanish first. Both of my parents are Spanish teachers. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. Now you said you started listening to the radio. Now, what? Well, let me ask you this: as a little girl, what type of music would be played around your home when you were growing up? I would say Motown. Okay. Classical. My dad really loves classical music. So a lot of classical, a lot of Motown. Um, the Carpenters. My mom loved the Beatles. Uh, she loved Elvis. That was pretty much what was played, yeah. Mm, okay. I know you say classical. I love mm -hmm. classical. My only thing is that I don't know enough composers. I just know the popular Yeah, ones, yeah. Know? Same here. But I, I do love classical. Out here, if you ever get a chance, there's a radio station called uh, KUSC. Mm -hmm. And they play classical music all day long. That's what I usually bump. I'll, yeah. I'll tell you what I, you know, because people always ask me as well, when I, whenever I had done interviews, I don't do them anymore. But they'll ask me, what do you play in your car? I don't play hip hop. I'll be honest. I, I was mm -hmm. raised with that. But I used to play classical music, or I'll tell you another thing, I play a lot of gospel music. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, you know what, for me, uh, and I know I'm probably going to lose some fans here, but uh, for me, there's no other music that uplifts and inspires and awakens something up inside of you like gospel music. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very inspiring. Usually, and it's very few times that I feel down, I usually bump gospel music and it like uh. picks me right back up. Yeah, so. I know a lot of people who are like that yeah yeah okay yeah now uh, um uh g g growing up uh, with your uh, at one point you said you went to go live with your dad then you went to go live in houston uh, but how old were you when you went to go live in houston um i went there about six months before i graduated college okay so 
long time ago. That was 2000. I think I moved there in 2003 because I graduated in like December 2003. So, but it had to be before. It was like six months before graduation. I already knew I was going to move there. Okay. So okay. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to go ahead and move here because I know I'm going here. I'm going to chase my dream here in Houston. You okay. know, like I had my mind made up already by okay. the last year. And, and around what age would you say that you knew you wanted to pursue this career in singing? I was in college. Okay, in college. So it yeah. wasn't as a, as a little girl. No, I, I always thought I was going to be a lawyer or something like that. Like, I, because I always like to fight for people. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, this isn't just, you know, it, it was all about justice. And I wanted to be a lawyer, you know, and fight for people's rights. And, you know, but no, I didn't end up being a lawyer. Um, when I was in college, I just started like doing talent shows. Then I started doing talent shows through the radio station and then I started winning money and I was like, oh, I could win money. I could pay my rent with this. Like, this is pretty cool. Like, I need to start writing more songs. I've always written songs okay. since I was little. I did poetry. I always wrote music, but I never considered it to be any type of career. My parents were always like, you can't be a teacher. You can't be anything that pays low. You need to do something that pays well. You right. know, get your education, get your education. So they were real, always pushing me about education, obviously, you know, because they're teachers. Yes, but yes. And I liked school. It wasn't that I didn't like school. I loved it. But yeah. I just, music just pulls you in. Like, No, that is very, very <laughs> true. So, so what, do you, what would you say inspired you to write poetry when you were young? Because one thing that from podcasting now that I get from a lot of singers and rappers that come here, many of them would always say, even before I started rapping, I didn't know I was in a rap. I always wrote poetry. Yeah. And I, and I see that amongst a lot of people. So there has to be some type of foundation. Like what, what that's what rap is. Yeah, you're right. That's yeah. what rap is. It's poetry. And like, that's why I always wrote raps okay. like that, because I grew up writing poetry and I used to read poetry. Like I, I, I was an early reader. I was reading by the time I was three years old. Wow. My mom was a tutor and she would teach um, some of her students that didn't speak English. She uh -huh. taught English to the non-English speaking students. And she said, I wanted to sit there and listen to her. So I would sit there and learn. I learned how to read. So I was, and then I started reading poetry. I don't know. I just got poetry books from my grandmother and mm, okay. I was into reading it. And then I started writing it. And then I was into reading books and books and like all I would do is read books. Yeah. And then um, I started writing like short stories too. I mean, I was always into writing. Wow, mm -hmm. it reminds me of my uh, one, my daughter. She is uh, 25, and I remember she used to play tag with all her friends as a little girl, and she would literally run around holding a book open like this, uh -huh. reading while playing tag. She oh just, wow! She, she still does not play tag, but still reads. That's quite a multitask, yes, right there. Yes, exactly. A whole game. Yeah. So when you started, well, you said you entered talent shows about. You were in college at that time when you entered. And mm -hmm. what inspired you? Did you sing for somebody and then you said you should try it? Or? Well, I sang since I was little. Okay. I performed since I was little. Um, yeah, my dad played the guitar. My mom produces. And she used to be a, uh, in a band in Spain. And they toured Spain like a long time ago. Oh, wow. So I guess I got it from my parents, you know, both of my parents. But my mom especially, like, really musically inclined. So I always, like, performed everything since kindergarten. I would always perform solos and all through high school i was in the ensemble in high school okay so i was always performing like that was normal you know okay, what i'm saying okay. yeah it was normal for me to do that but i would also write my own songs mm -hmm. and i'd storm away i just had a bunch of lyrics and i would make my own music like i even took like you know the b side of the tapes right where they had the instrumental on the other side mm -hmm. i would take the double cassette tape deck when i was younger and record myself over that same beat, but my own song. I did that with Debbie Gibson. I did that with Michael Jackson, Janet Jackson. Okay, with your own lyrics. <laughs> I even had my own group, yes, called the Red Hots, like me and this girl. We had our own music group and we did concerts in the neighborhood and we charged people. Wow. And since I did the newsletter, I also did the newsletter for the neighborhood. I promoted the concert in the newsletter and I sold the newsletter and we sold tickets to the concert. Wow. That so it was always like, <laughs> there just not didn't right. really think about like this is a career or anything now when you said you would record yourself uh, uh, and when you would play it back did you like hearing your voice yeah yeah mm -hmm. you, you, you'd be surprised how many rappers have come on here and then uh when they started recording their demos they uh, i would always ask them when you played it back to hear yourself did you like it they always say nah i didn't like my voice a lot of people didn't yeah it, it's more that didn't than more that did yeah you know but uh so 
you uh, entered a couple of talent shows, I guess, when you were in college, and you won. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, what would be like the money? Like, what was the prizes? Like? Oh, like three hundred bucks, two hundred bucks. Okay. Okay. I didn't care. I was like, whoa. Even my first feature that I ever got paid for, I got paid a hundred dollars, and I was like, wow, this is more than I made at work today. You know, like I mm -hmm. was excited. Okay. okay. <laughs> you know. Uh, um. So so now you perform a couple of talent shows, you get paid, and then you move to Houston. Uh, uh, when you get to Houston, what is your first move there? Like, did you start working? Did you... Yeah, okay. I had a job. I was like a, a market uh, research firm supervisor. Mm -hmm. It was like they gave surveys. And so during election season, like people would have you call and get people surveys and I knew Spanish. So if you're bilingual, you could get more surveys or you're bilingual. And then I started supervising over there. And at the same time, I was still going back to up to Dope House Records and I was working with people there and I started working with Juan Gotti, mm -hmm. you know, over there. And that's when he was like, well, see, you're gonna quit your job. He's like, you're gonna quit your job and I'm gonna call you one day and tell you to quit your job and you're gonna quit. I was like, okay. So when I got that job, I told him like, one day I'm gonna quit. And they were just like, okay. I was like, no, I'm just saying like, I'm not gonna be here forever because I'd gotten promoted to a supervisor. Right. They wanted me to like do a bunch of like, like, like a career. Yeah. But I had to be honest, I was like, no, I'm gonna quit one day. I don't know when, but think, you know, I'm, I'm in the music business and this is the career that I want. They just kind of laughed like, okay. But then one day he told me, quit your job. We're gonna go on the road. I was like, okay, when his first album came out and that was it. I okay. quit. Now, now, how did you get introduced to, to him or to Dope House? When, uh, was it just through mutual friends, singing? Um, it was through a chat room on 97.9 on The Box, which was like the Houston hip hop state, the one I was winning the talent shows okay. through, the radio station, the hip hop station that we yeah. all listen to. Um, I was on the chat room trying to find a studio to record my one of my first songs that I wrote. Okay. I had my beat, I had my song ready, first time, go to professional studio. Some guy was like, I got a studio for you. I was like, well, I have a hundred bucks. What can you do? Can you do two hours, a hundred bucks? Oh yeah, I got you, here's the address. That was Dope House Records address. Hmm. That was Payne studio that I ended up at. And I knew about it, I knew who SPM was at the time, because my friend in college, I didn't know who he was until my friend in college introduced me to him. But I knew who he was, but I didn't think, I, I didn't know I was gonna end up there. That's what's so crazy. Right, right. So I ended up there. Okay. And uh, the, the beat that you had, was it, a, was it an instrumental or did somebody had already produced yeah, it for Yeah, somebody you? had produced it for me. Okay. I had met this guy through another guy in college, like, because a lot of people in college, we did music too. So I kind of like got with them, anybody who went to my school who was also doing music. Mm -hmm. And we would always link up and do features for each other. And, you know, we were just trying to find our way then. You're talking like 2000 two 2003 you know, it's just kind of like right and then into 2004 it's just like that's when the cds were starting to die down yeah. because that's when the digital started and everybody was bootlegging on um napster yes so the industry was like turned upside down right then at that moment like that's when msn music and itunes popped up right there 2004 2005 yeah so the industry was just like what do you, what do you do how do i get into this music business i just go to a studio where i record music okay now now i'm gonna shop it now i'm gonna do like four or five songs and then i shop it i guess you know like i didn't know what the hell i was doing right the whole time i didn't know what i was doing <laughs> i was just like it's just i mean i go to a club with like this horrible cd that had like you know two or three songs on it with a bad mix you know because Payne had just started engineering for dope house over there and now it would be considered a bad mix but then you know it was like i had what i had and I would run to go to a, some DJ in some hood club in Houston, somewhere I don't know anybody, just like risking my life basically right. to get a DJ a song that I thought was just gonna be it. Right. And and uh, uh, what was the response that you got from that song? I would, yeah, it's good, it's good. Like people were surprised, you know? Oh my gosh, oh, a white girl, you know? Like, wow, that's pretty good. But I wasn't professionally done. I didn't have anything like professionally mixed and mastered at the time. I was just starting then. And then when I finally got my very first song mixed and mastered, which was like 2005, my own single, professionally done, it was okay. like, okay, now what do I do? Uh, now I work on more songs okay. and make an album and push some CDs. Okay, and everything, you were funding everything? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, wow. favors, pretty much. I'll sing on your record, you give me a beat. 
I'll sing on your record. Give me studio time. You got some hooks you need for somebody. You know, I mean, that's that's how I worked my first three albums most most of the time. It was just like somebody in the in the crew taking pictures for the artwork. You know, right, like right, right. right. <laughs> I, I, it's funny that you said that how you, you would go to clubs and hoping that these DJs would play it. Uh, the reason why I say that is because I remember um, I st had stopped DJing. I want to say, shoot, maybe late nineties. And I started in 2006, my like that was my last year. Mm -hmm. uh, DJ Quick uh, is coming out with an album called The Fixers, uh, him and AMG together. And he asked, told me, come on, DJ for us this whole year. We're gonna release a record. We just got signed to Sony, blah, blah, blah. So I DJ, I came back out of retirement, if you will, DJ for the whole year, mm -hmm. 2000, 2006 going into 2007, New Year's night. That was my last gig and I said, I'm fucking done. Uh, I got out of the music from 2007 to 2017. So for 10 years, believe it or not, I was free and I was at peace. Wow. So, but leading up to that, I remember I would go to clubs and visit my friends uh, 2001, 2002. Uh -huh. And always guys, hey man, here's my friends. Yeah. Hey, man, here's my friends CD. Hey man, here's my friends. Can you play? Can you? <laughs> and you just can't play. Like yeah, you can't. You know, if you never heard it. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, I know that, that must have been tough for any artist, you know, to do that because they just want to get their shit out. There, yeah, and you don't you know, know what to do. You're just right. like, okay, this is what I see. This is what I think I should do. You know, like, how else am I supposed to get it to somebody? We didn't have any kind of social media at all anyway to begin right. with at that point. Right. We had no social media. So I'm just like, how do I get people to play my record? In the club? Okay, the club, that's how records blow up these days. Yeah, we can get a record in the club. So that was just my my train of thought like how else are we going to do it and then i thought well now that i've got something done professionally then i need to do a whole album of it and i need to just put it out there i need to just push it in the streets i just need to go from town to town i need to push it you know and that's have flyers yeah yeah and, and and how did that work out for you uh pretty much hustling mm -hmm. were you were you blowing them out or yeah out the trunk i was um i had i had some people with me sometimes like i get somebody with me that knew how to sell and we would just go in my yeah. car. We would just go from town to town and we would get me and um, this guy named Manuel. We would go from town to town and sometimes sleep in the car at a gas station in a town because we knew we could hit some licks the next day. Right. But it was like, you know, you want to plant seeds. Right. Right. Okay. Now, uh, um, it's funny because, man, it, even today now, if you go down Hollywood Boulevard, there's still dudes out there trying to sell the movies. <laughs> And it ain't no different in Times Square. Same thing. One guy looks at my hat and he says, oh, you, you, you're from L.A.? And I was like, yeah. He goes, man, help me out right now. I go, dude, we do the same shit out here in L.A., bro. Yeah. Don't try to hustle <laughs> me. You know, because a lot of times they'll say, hey, man, check this out. This is for you. Oh, okay, cool, thanks. So what you give me for it? And that's our hustle. Uh -huh. Nah, dude, I'm not trying to buy your CD. Yeah. Uh, uh, I remember one time, this guy even took offense to it because I gave him 20 bucks, but I told him, keep your CD. And mm -hmm. he still got mad because I didn't want to listen to his music. Oh, damn. I just didn't want it you know but uh so at what year would you say you released your first album uh 2007 okay 2007 um who were the producers of that first album uh mainly Payne Jaime Payne Ortiz the engineer mm -hmm. he produced a lot of those okay okay uh, he was the main one any features yeah uh, I had Juan Gotti on there and Loji um man, I think that was it Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, um, how did that album do for you? I hated it. I still hate it. Okay. Why? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because what happened was at the time, I didn't know where to go as direction wise for my first album. Right. And Payne was like, look, I'm a member of the Latin Grammys. Juan Gotti just got nominated for a Latin Grammy. You know, we have connections on this side of the music business right now. So you should do an album and make it 50%, at least 50% Spanish so it will fit the criteria to be submitted for Latin Grammys. I was like, okay. I mean, writing in Spanish really wasn't my thing. Spanish music was never my thing. It was my mom's thing, it wasn't mine. Okay. I was always writing in English. I mean, I was just, but I was like, all right, let's do it. So I did, I made it pretty much 50% Spanish. And it was a great experience. There's still some, a couple, there's like two songs I like. The rest of it, I can't stand to hear my voice. That's where I can't stand to hear my voice, my early stuff. Okay. Like my early stuff, I'm like, ah. 
I didn't know how to do this then, and I didn't know how to do this then, and with my vocals and the, you know what I mean? I was yes. just like, oh, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> no, you know what? I believe me, I truly understand what you mean. I'll give an example without naming these guys' names. Um, I DJ for a lot of a lot of Chicano rappers in the late '90s, from like maybe '97, '98, '99, mm -hmm. and um, these guys had hits. Maybe came out in the early '90s. They had hits. When it came to their main song that they would do at the very end, they never wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. They never. It would be for an example. Let's just say, uh, hypothetically, that I'm DJing for Vanilla Ice. Yeah. We all know his main song is Ice Ice Baby. Mm -hmm. It would be like him saying, "Hey man, I'm gonna go out there and perform, but I'm not doing Ice Ice Baby." <laughs> yeah. You know, it, that was the struggle with a lot of these early Chicano rappers that didn't want to do their hits. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why? I hate all my early stuff. You know, and I'm like, these people came here for you. Oh, no. Performance-wise now, you got to do it. If it's one of those, you got to do it. I've been performing songs that have been around since 2006. Mm -hmm. Till now. Because <laughs> just like the damn Dope House Family song. That song, if I don't do it, the crowd is not going to be happy. Right. That's right. my first rap that I ever did. And I don't like hearing it. But they like it. And that one is the one. And I was like, I have to do that one. I've been doing it for 14 years. Wow. wow. <laughs> so I know, what it, I know what you mean. Yeah. About, But you get used to it. You're just yeah. like, it's just like a routine. Because every crowd's different. People are like, why don't you get tired of performing the same songs over and over again? Because it's a new crowd every time. It's a new experience. Yes. I don't even really think about I've been doing this song this mm -hmm. long. Yeah. Every audience is different. I'll like put certain songs in there that I don't put for other audience. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you just every experience is different. Just okay. like I've seen people that are like MC Magic, for instance, has one of the best shows mm -hmm. that I've ever seen. And every time I watch him perform, I'm in amazement. I'm like, he really does make it a different experience every time. Yeah. And he's performing the same songs. But yeah. It's a different show. Yes. I don't know how to describe it, but I, I've always been in admiration of MC Magic <laughs> on that. He's one of the people that could do that. You know what? I, I truly, truly admire and appreciate MC Magic, and I'll tell you why. <clears throat> um, he drove all the way down from Arizona to do this podcast. Oh, wow. Yeah, he did. And uh, he got his He's own room. Mm -hmm. He got his own room and everything, and he came over here, and he said he was excited, and we chopped it up, gave us his whole story, and... And I'll tell you why, well, one of the many reasons why I admire him. Mm -hmm. He drove from Arizona, and there's guys that live locally that, okay, that won't even come. I've canceled the day of or the day before. It's crazy. You know? And I usually, I tell them all the time, look, I'm not trying to be mean, but if I were to ever invite you again, you're at the, you're at the bottom now. You know, or, yeah. or most likely, because there's been guys that have canceled on me twice. That's a, that's a wrap, bro. It's a terrible. Rap. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've had guys that have told me, uh, g give me a month to prepare. I'm like, it's an interview. <laughs> like, what are you going to do, stretch out? <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, like I, didn't, I didn't get it, but yeah. But Think uh, of fake stories to tell? <laughs> probably. Pro pro probably. I got to think of some something that didn't really happen to me, but that'll sound really cool. <laughs> Pre I don't know. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. But listen, here's what we're going to do. We've come to... Uh, uh, we ran out of time. We're going to go ahead and take a 10-minute break. We're going to come right back, and we'll continue talking about your music career, your first, second album, so on and so forth. Sweet. So, all good. We're going to take a 10-minute break. Okay, everybody, call somebody, text somebody, slap the shit out of somebody, let them know that Carolyn Rodriguez is in the motherfucking house, and we'll be back in yeah. 10 minutes. Rodium Radio, and I am your host, Tony A. The Wizard. We started a GoFundMe page because we need you to help us meet our goal. And our goal is to release a Chicano rap documentary. And we need you to be a part of this. Everyone who contributes will have certain incentives offered to them. For an example, I'll name one. Your name will be on the credits of the film. Everyone who gives, everyone who contributes, uh, their name will be on the credits. That's just one thing that we have to offer it. But yet, if you read the description, you see other incentives for your contribution. If you've seen the Rodeo Mixtape documentary, you will not be disappointed with this documentary shining light on Chicano rap, the Chicano culture. It is something that can be used as an educational tool uh, now and in the future. So once again, help us meet our goal so that we can start production. And remember this, we have a voice and we will be heard.
What it do, what it do, it's Mr. Little One chilling on Rhodium Radio with the one and only Tony A and John motherfucking Elkin, boy. Hey, what up, it's your boy Mr. Shadow, you're watching Rhodium Radio with my homeboy Tony A, the wizard. You know what time it is. Yeah, what up, this is Mr. Night Owl, and you're listening to Rhodium Radio with the legendary Tony A, the motherfucking wizard. Yo, what's cracking? Nosotros somos Aqua. Estamos aquí con Tony A, the wizard. You know Rodium what it is. Radio, damn it. You know what it is. Yo, what up? This is Mellow Man Ace and Padrino. And you tuned in to Rhodium Radio with my man Tony A. Keep it locked. Yo, what's cracking? It's your boy OG Arabian Prince from the world's most dangerous group, NWA. Sitting here with my boy Tony A, the wizard, on Rhodium Radio. What's up, everybody? It's your homegirl, Magic Girl, and you are now listening to Rhodium Radio with Tony A, the Wizard. Yo, what's up? This is Bozo, a.k.a. Emiliano. You tune into Rhodium Radio on Tony Vision's YouTube channel. Let's get it. What up, what up? This is Mr. Soto. You guys are now in tune to Rhodium Radio right here on Tony Vision on YouTube. Yep. Check it out. This is MC Poncho on the MIC. Shout out to Tony A, the Wizard, Rhodium Radio. You already know. What up? This is DJ Trick, Spanish Fly, and you're watching Tony A on the Rhodium Radio Show. Big G, Rodium Radio, Tony A in full effect. Stay tuned, watch, listen. That's how we doing it over here. Yo, what up? I'm out here. It's Big Daddy Swoles. I'm jamming with my man, Tony A, the wizard, out here on Rodium Radio, the podcast is off the hook. Check us out. This is DJ Clientel, and you are listening to Rodium Radio with Tony A, the wizard. Yeah, 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 this baby bounce here with Tony A, the wizard. You are now tuned in to the Rodium Radio. We do it for the people, you hear me? Mike check, Mike check. Ernie G from Proper Dos. And I'm listening to Tony A, the motherfucking wizard on Rhodium Radio. And if you don't know, you should know. What's up, everybody? This is Soren Baker. I'm the author of the book, The History of Gangster Rap, in stores now worldwide. And you're listening to Rhodium Radio, hosted by Tony A. Make sure to check it out. We talk about the Rhodium mixtapes. We're here, Soren Baker, Rhodium Radio. Y'all, this is Greedy Greg, and I'm chilling with Tony the Wizard on Rhodium Radio. Hey, this is Swifty Blue. I'm right here at Rhodium Radio with Tony A the Wizard. Stay tuned. It's the KAS here live on Rhodium Radio with the one and only Tony A the Wizard. What up, y'all? This is Kiki Smooth, the first Mexican rapper out of Compton, rich and ruthless, and you're listening to the Rhodium Radio with Tony A the Grand Wizard El Mago himself. Hey, Compton's in the house. What's up? It's quite the Yes Guy with my Harbor Otter got homeboy Tony A the Wizard on Rhodium Radio. Yes Guy. Hey, what's up, Hampton? It's your homeboy Duende. You're tuned into Rhodium Radio with my homeboy Tony A the Wizard. Ya te la sabes, wey. What up, what up? It's your boy Baldacci the Beast, Air for Music, Face of LA. I right hear Rhodium Radio. Make sure y'all tune in. Your boy Tony A the Wizard. This is Kelvin Anderson, owner of the world famous VIP Records. And you listen to my man Tony A, the Wizard, on Rhodium Radio. Yeah, yeah, what up? It's Lil Black, you the brown super baller, and you checking out Rhodium Radio with the homeboy Tony A, the Wizard. You was cracking at your boy OG Big Wicked, Real Ones Apparel, Orange County. I hear with my boy Tony A, the Wizard, Rhodium Radio. Y'all make sure to peep it. Peace. The Transa Raza, aquí su servidor, Simple and Pecador. And you're listening to Rhodium Radio with my boy, Tony A, the Wizard. Check, check. What's up? It's your boy, Capital I, man, from the Mexican crew. And you're tuning in to Rhodium Radio with my boy, Tony A, the Wizard. This motherfucker's a legend. Bow! What's up, y'all? This is Christy Glove, and you're watching the Rhodium Radio Show on Tony Vision on YouTube. What's up? This is Mr. D on Rhodium Radio. Kicking back with the whole boy, Tony. Yo, this is Fancy the Boss. Tune in on YouTube at Rodeon Radio with Tony A. the Wizard. What's up? This is Leah Farsayer, a.k.a. the Dragon, the Serpent, the Spear. I'm on Rodeon Radio with my boy Tony the Wizard. Hey, man. Nick V and Eric V, the Baker Boys in the house, hanging out with Rodeon Radio. And the one and only Tony the Wizard. Tony the Wizard, a.k.a. Kylo Ren, right Ooh. here on YouTube. Sundays and Wednesdays. Tony Vision, subscribe Tony now. Tony Vision, yeah, Big yeah, boys, yeah. Big baby. What's good with it? This is Old Creep, a.k.a. Jay Stompanato. I'm putting it down for Orange County on the Rhodium Radio Show by West Coast legend DJ Tony A. 
We up and out this bitch. What's up with it, dog? It's West Coast Gilly on Brody on radio with the legend Tony A. the Wizard on Tony Vision. You know what it is, West Coast to the fullest. Believe that. What's up, everybody? This is Stefan Orrier listening to Rhodium Radio with Tony A. the Wizard. Yo, what up? It's your boy Doughboy Tony. You tuned into Rhodium Radio with West Coast legend Tony A. the Wizard. What up? It's your boy Lottie the G, straight out of Santa Ana, CA, and we're right here live in the mix with the West Coast legend Tony A. the Wizard on Rhodium Radio, Tony Vision on YouTube. Yo, what's up, world? This is Cool 187, above the law in the building. And you tuned in to Rhodium Radio with my man Tony A, the Wizard. <laughs> What's up, this is Darren Vegas. You're on Rhodium Radio with Tony A, the Wizard. Real West Coast hip-hop history right here. Yo, yo, what up? Sleepy Milo in the house here at the Rhodium Radio with my boy Tony A, the Wizard, giving us our voice back. One of the realest motherfuckers I know. What's up, homie? Show me Frankie Quinones, a.k.a. Creeper from Cholo B. And you're listening to Tony A, the Wizard on Rhodium Radio. That's what's up right there. Hey, yo, what's up, man? It's Kuja the Savage. I'm right here with Tony A, the Wizard, Rhodium Radio. Everybody stay tuned, man. It's a motherfucking hit. Yo, shout out to Rhodium Radio, Tony A, the Wizard. Your boy Pablo Nunez right here in the studio. Be about it, people. Que onda muchacho, ahí viene este miro. Kim with the Black Sick and the Negrito de Los Angelitos. And you're checking out that Rhodium Radio with Tony A, the Wizard. Kibo Raza, this is Wicked from the Brown Side here on Rhodium Radio with Tony A, the Wizard. You know. What up, it's your homeboy Infinite TGM, chilling with Tony A, the Wizard on Rhodium Radio. Make sure you guys go check that out. What up, everybody? This is Wicked Baby Doll, and I'm chilling with Tony A at Rhodium Radio. Check it out. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube. And follow him on Instagram. What's good? What's good? It's your boy Spanky Loco, and you tuning in to Rhodium Radio with that motherfucking legend, Mr. Tony A. You know what time it is, West. Hey, what up? This Rebello the Dome. And this Dominator. And we came straight from the 805, ready to slap that motherfucking meat on your grill, bitch. Rhodium Radio, <laughs> Central Coast Click. What up? What up with it? This your boy OG Magoo, Los Angeles Airbus artist. Big Chillian on site with the homie Tony the Wizard on Rhodium Radio. All gas, no brakes. Let's get it. Man, you're now listening to LA Icon, man. Right here live with Tony A, the motherfucking wizard on Rhodium Radio. What's up, what's up? This is Esha Daz, the Spanish fly, with that reintroduction right here on Rhodium Radio with my boy, the wizard, Tony A. Yeah, yeah, what up? It's Spanish fly MC. Big MOC, Mr. Most MC. On the Rhodium Radio Show, baby, with Tony A, the Grand Wizard. Let's walk. Johnny D from Spanish Fly on Rhodium Radio. Your one and only Theo with the giant Cheeto. <laughs> hey, what's up, everyone? This is Trish Toledo, and I'm over here with Tony A, John motherfucking Elkins, and DG Media at Rhodium Radio. Make sure you tune in every Wednesday and Sunday at 7 p.m. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your girl, Blanca. Bobby D presents Uncle Snoop's Army. Chilling right here at Rhodium Radio with Tony A, the Wizard. Make sure you tune in Wednesdays and Sundays at 7 p.m. on YouTube. What up, West Coast and all hip-hop fans? This is your girl, Violet Brown, and I'm here with Tony A, the Wizard. Yo, this is Daniel Jones, the D to the motherfucking G Media Clips. Here with your boy, Tony A, the Wizard, on the Rhodium Radio Show. Check, check, one, two, one, two. This is Roger Live, and you are in tune to the sounds of Tony A, the Wizard on Rhodium Radio, West Coast. Yo, what's up? This is John motherfucking Elkins, and you're tuning into Rhodium Radio with my homeboy, DJ Tony A, the Wizard. Welcome back, everybody, to Rhodium Radio episode 80 with the podcast that slaps your coach a fat ass with a fat ass dick. We're going to go ahead and jump butt naked right back into it. So, without further ado, my special guest, Carolyn Rodriguez. Hello. ¿Cómo estás? Bien, bien, muy bien. You know what? That That's very impressive. And, and I'm going to tell you why. Look at this. Let me kill the stupid ant. Uh, <laughs> because you know what? When, okay, I speak fluent Spanish, so I try to always teach my kids, like when they were young, and they always made fun of me whenever I try to talk to them in Spanish. Mm-hmm. 
you know, um, quieres tortillas, quieres gomas, quieres una soda, whatever I would yeah, talk to. Yeah. And they would always laugh. But now that they're older and they want to get a really good job, yes. dad, why didn't you teach us? You know, mm -hmm. so it's very important to know, you know, several different languages. Uh, a couple of other languages that I tried to learn, I'm, I don't want to say I'm pretty good because I'll be lying. Mm -hmm. uh, I try to learn a little bit of Hebrew and a little bit of Greek. Mm, so, those are two interesting languages. Yeah, so I'm really, really into the, uh, I like the Hebrew language. I like the Hebrew, uh, what well, they call it, the Aleph bet, not the alphabet. So, so, so many dope things about that. But anyways, let's jump right back into the music. Uh, how did you meet SPM and uh, what year did you meet him? Uh, I met him in 2001. Okay. Um, I was on, I was just on the dock at the Dope House Records. Okay. I was just there, sitting there. And like, I was really pissed off because um, my electricity was off in my apartment. I wasn't living in Houston then. I was living in Huntsville, still going to college. Okay. And I was mad because my electricity was off. And it wasn't because I didn't pay my part of the bills because my roommates hadn't paid their part of the bills. So I was like, just pissed. I was just sitting, I guess I was, I don't know if I was on the phone or what, but he just asked me like, what's wrong? And I told him, he's like, oh, well, why don't you just call the electric company and like sing to them? And they'll turn back, maybe they'll turn your lights back on. I was like, okay, no, <laughs> you know, that was, that was it. That's how I met him really? on the dock. Yeah. What did you think, man? Why are you being so sarcastic with me right now? No, no, he was cool. He was cool. I was just like, I think he was just trying to like cheer, cheer me up. up. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. And, and as soon after that, you just continue to see him around the studio or? Yeah, I saw him around. I went into a few of his shows because I was really working a lot with Payne then and a little group called DFO that he had over there at the studio, mm -hmm. which consisted of the Twin Berettas who were signed to Dope House Records and Juan Gotti and a couple other guys. They had like their own group. So we were just kind of like rolling together as a group. Okay. You know, like a production group. Okay. And we would just go to the shows and stuff. But I did I did um, sing something for him a long time ago that never got on the Lone Star Riders. It was for the Lone Star Riders compilation. Mm -hmm. And then I had sung some stuff for Bash that never got released either. But I, I had already kind of like done one thing here and there, you know, just like getting my feet wet. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Now, uh, um, during that time, what was his music, you know, I like to ask questions as if I don't know anything because mm -hmm. I like the public to almost like if they're sitting here asking you, um, was his music, was it a, already had taken off already? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. He already had his deal with Universal. Uh, he was, he, yeah, he already had his deal with Universal. He was already on the radio with, uh, High So High and other songs, you know, my name, all that stuff. He was, he was. Yeah. Yeah, he was at the peak of his career already. Wow. You know, um, I mean, not the peak, but I'm just saying he was blown at that point before he got locked up. That was the peak of his career. Right, right. Okay. You know, um, I'm trying to remember who I had here, but we were talking about um, how a lot of Chicano rappers can relate a lot to Tupac. Okay, mm. a lot to Tupac. And then, so I would always ask them, you know, um, what do you think it was about Tupac that you can relate to? And a lot of them pretty much had the same thing. A lot of heartfelt stuff, a mm -hmm. lot of uh, stuff that he went through, I'm going through. So he was able to pretty much, uh, we, we can relate to him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what do you think it was about SPM's, uh, SPM that that the, the fans love so much? What do you think it was? Like, what would they say? It was his delivery? Was it his lyrics? What do you think it was? Yeah, probably the same thing as why they would say Tupac. Okay. Because of the, you know, pain is relatable. Yes. Pain and struggle is, is, is relatable. People, you know, they, that that's what it is. Okay. I mean, and the way he puts things, you know, he paints a picture. The way he tells his, he just has that gift of lyrics, painting a picture for you, tell, storytelling, which you don't, you know, that's that's a rare gift. That, absolutely, that is a rare gift because um, uh, me personally, uh, well, it's been proven that 90% of the learning comes through the eyes. People see it, mm -hmm. you know. Visual, uh, yeah. Yes. Yep. Now, him painting a picture, people see it, mm, you know. Yeah, good point. You know, so I, they're able to, to relate to it. So yeah. I, I could understand that. Now, uh, um, uh, uh, how many groups at this time would you say were signed to Dope House? I know he has many, many, but if you can shed light to the people that may not know, mm -hmm. you know. 
At the, was at the time I met him, or oh, at the time that at the height of his career, or yeah, two thousand one, I guess. He had um, Baby Bash or Beach. He was okay. Beach then, signed there. Uh, Graham, Rashid, the Twin Berettas, Lucky Luciano, uh, Powder was signed. Um, major and an artist named Major Riley who did reggae. I'm not forgetting anybody. I think I'm not forgetting anybody. <laughs> I think I got everybody. <laughs> Yeah, in 2001, that's who was actually signed to the label. Okay. Yeah, and I, and I think Primsters might have been signed to the label, too. I'm not sure. Okay. Who, who would you say uh, in Houston, if, if anybody was bigger than SPM? Travis Scott. Okay. That's all I could think of. Now, uh, um, I want to say 1991. I, I'll show you a picture after. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in houston texas and we performed at a place called uh, the palladium mm -hmm. okay it was like an all-black club there and i remember ghetto boys had just dropped their record um my mind's playing tricks on me yeah and uh bushwick bill was there me rest in peace was there with us he had a patch and he was telling us how he lost his eye and all of this stuff oh bushwick rest in peace yes. yeah that's the homie right there so um we performed out there everything was all good epmd uh, father mc and a couple other people 1997 from 1991 to 1997 i go back to the palladium with uh mellow man ace mm -hmm. i'm djing for him now and now it's just a straight all mexican club mm -hmm. the, uh this palladium place i ha i probably haven't been back there since but uh i heard that when spm took off that he just like ran everything in houston mm -hmm. that's what i heard out here yeah you know so yeah that's why i asked now with, with the were the ghetto boys still big out there at that time? I think it was more Scarface. Okay. Scarface, like the ghetto boys were bigger in like the mid nineties, right? Yes. But then by the time, I think by the time I got there, I was listening, I was jamming Scarface's albums. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I, yeah. I grew up on ghetto boys. Yeah. I jammed ghetto boy. I got in trouble for ghetto boys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but Scarface was the one I kept listening to. And at that time, I think he was, he was dropping really dope albums okay how, how often would spm drop an album for uh as far as a solo album like himself out uh, i guess he was dropping one every year that's up good. until he got incarcerated he was dropping one every year that's good and, and i'll tell you why that's good because there's a lot of artists out here i don't know i i've never understood this i'll give you an example like a dj quick mm -hmm. good friend of mine i've known him since he's been 19 years old but this guy would drop an album every seven years and I just never understood that, you know. Yeah. Especially when there's money to be made and the fans are hungry and the fans want to see you and fans want to hear you and they want something new. Yeah. You know, and I think that's part of the reason, uh, well, one of the many reasons why I think people loved uh, uh, SPM because he gave them what they wanted, mm -hmm. you know. So now uh, what's a, uh, uh, one of the most memorable, if any, SPM stories? I would have to say I didn't really know him until uh, he was locked up. Like I didn't okay. know him, like as a friend, as anything. Didn't didn't know him. Just hi, see each other, you know, okay. cordial. But I didn't know him at all as a person. Mm -hmm. So probably, I guess, probably one of the better SPM stories would just be me on the phone with him when he was in the county. We were working on. Uh, what album were we working on at the time? I don't know if we were working on this County Boys album that he did with the guys in the county that is actually going to come out. Or were we working on When Devil Strike? Were we working on Last Year Violinist? One of those albums. He was working on something. And he um, he told me, he knew I could do ac different accents. You okay. know, he knew I could do a different accent. So he told me to, he told me to act like I was like uh, somebody who did uh, his hair or something in the neighborhood, like in South Park or whatever, get on the phone with this guy from the county and just like talk to him in different accents so he wouldn't know. Like, And so I did, and he was like really falling for it. And then all of a sudden he told him, hey, that's like a dude that you've been talking to the whole time. He's like, oh my God. And we just like died laughing. Because <laughs> that's when it, everything started with like the whole accents. You can do accents. Okay, we're going to have you do all these characters now. Like, okay, that's what started all that. Okay. But we used to have fun all the time, like messing with people. We would always mess with people. You know, and, and that's good that you're sharing this because uh, I want people to get to know 
who he was or how he was as a person. Mm -hmm. uh, like for an example, only a few people can actually say they actually know him and I, you know him. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, ha, I never had an opportunity to meet him. What, what is he like, you know, like sitting down? What is, is, he, is he a funny guy? Does he talk a lot? You know? Oh yeah, he's funny. <laughs> yeah, he's a clown. I mean, he's really funny. Okay. Um, but he's he's like one of those people that he's gonna talk and everything he says, people listen and hang on every word. So that's just how it is. That's how he is. Okay. He's more. He sometimes he's like a like trying to be a psychologist or something. You know, like trying to analyze everything. Okay. He tries to. An, he's very analytical person, critical thinker. You know, like that. So. He's always trying to analyze everything. But yeah, I mean, he's just, he's just cool. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> all good, all good. Real okay. laid back, just cool. You know, you you think after all these years, you know, but I think between the fans that fight so hard for him, um, between, I think they're the reason why he's still able to just be so, you know, positive. Right, okay. Because he's in the worst place you can be. Yeah. Texas prisons are just like right. the worst. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and the reason why I ask that is because like, uh, for an example, whenever I share with people that I had an opportunity to hang out and be in the studio with Dr. Dre, I always have to tell people, I don't know the Dre of today, the, the billionaire. Yeah. I, I don't. I have to say that I known, I knew him from like 87 to 91. Right. Like that was it. So when people ask me, how was he back then? I'll be real with you. I didn't know that Dr. Dre was a broke dude back then. Yeah. But it didn't matter because I love that guy from the World Class Wrecking Crew. I was a huge fan. Mm -hmm. And when I would see him in the studio sample and uh, tweak certain sounds and engineer and rap, it was just what, amazing to me. Yeah. You know? uh, so uh, I think one of the most uh, that showed me a lot about him, one day he's playing a song, A uh, Hundred Miles and Running. Mm -hmm. and he plays it and he stops it and he looks at me and I was the only one in the studio with him and he asks me Tony what do you think it needs now in my mind I'm thinking to myself dude you're like the Quincy Jones of hip hop right what the hell are you doing asking me mm -hmm. but I just shared certain things I said I don't know I said like you know what I don't think you should be asking me but on the mixtapes sometimes you didn't ha have choruses you had cutting and scratching mm -hmm. for choruses right and he thought about it and said oh okay cool I'm not saying I inspired that, but that's what he ended up doing anyway, because maybe he had that in his head. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not, I might have just confirmed that. But I usually tell people those kind of stories. Every time I saw him, he was always busy. He was always uh, working. He was always on the phone. Somebody always picked him up. I never really saw him dead time. Right. You know. And, and There's no rest. Right. There's no rest. <laughs> so, so that's why I was asking, you know, uh, uh, what kind of person was he like, you know, when people were around him. Yeah. You know? Well, I don't know. I mean, when people were around him... I wasn't around him. Like, okay. I mean, I'd see people around him, but I was just not into that. You know what I mean? Like, I've just never been that a crowd person. Mm -hmm. Like, so I, I really don't know who okay. he was with people around him. Okay. I only know who he is now or who he's been for the past 15 years. Okay. You know? And I mean, I, I don't know. Right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I know how he is with guards around him or, you know. Mm hmm other people that he's around in there but that's it I, w I really don't know how he is with like people out here in the free world right. I have no clue okay now uh when did you start coming out to la that you started meeting uh certain rappers out here that you started doing uh features with um juan Gotti actually brought me out here he brought me out here to promote a record that we were doing for our album together we put out an album together called dope la familia mm -hmm. And we were, we had just done a record with ZigZag over there in color, in Denver. We had a show, we, we traveled, you know, same right. thing, pushing, hustling out the trunk and doing shows and features and stuff like that. It was our life. So we decided that this single was radio worthy. And he said, I, I want to take it to E-Dub and Kool-Aid over there, Pocos Pero Loco. So I want to take the single over there to them. Let's just drive there from Colorado. I was like, let's do it. <laughs> so we went over there. And, gave him the record you know personally and then he was like well let's get in the studio and do some songs we ended up doing some songs kept going back to do songs i ended up signing with silent giant entertainment and put out a bunch of music through them but every time i'd go back to work on my album i just 
loved it more because I was getting different kind of production, different kind of music out. I was like growing and evolving and, and liking what I was doing okay. and enjoying myself and the people. And, and then finally I was just like, I'm just going to come out here. You know, I just moved out here. And I think also I had met, um, I think I met Miss, I met Miss Crazy on Twitter and I ended up doing a song for her album. And that's when I met Jimmy from Urban Kings, yes. who's here today. I met him and then he put me on, he's the one who put me on the record with Chino Grande, The Shine On Me. And then I had Dave Salas too. I was recording with Dave Salas because okay. I had met him through Edub. So I was also working on my own stuff with Dave and Dave was helping me too. So I would say between Jimmy and Dave, like that's how I started working with So It just branched out, I guess. Wow. And just wow. started doing more and more and more, you know? Would you say there was more opportunity out here than it was in? Yeah, definitely. That's, that's why I came. I was like, I'm not going to get any further than where I am right now. This was me in 2012. I was like, I can't, I can't stay here. Like, it's calling me over there. I just need to go. I just need to try it out. If it yeah. doesn't work out, I'm going back. I'll go back. I'm just going to give it six months. And I never, I didn't go back. I didn't go back until Carlos asked me to come back. Okay. And that was it. I, I, I was good. I was like, I'm staying out here forever. Like things are going great. Things are building. I started being able to do some acting stuff that I want to do because I've always loved sketch comedy, and that was something I always wanted to get into. And I still have sketch comedy that has not been released yet. <laughs> and Dominator happened to be the person that I met that we started doing sketch comedy. I, I can't even begin to describe what we've done but <laughs> i'm scared to release it because i'm just like oh my god this is like so over the top but yeah yeah okay wow it, it, dave salas much uh, respect to dave salas i mm -hmm. interviewed him here mm. uh, um, great stories uh that he shared um uh, one guy that i think is very very humble but doesn't get at least in my opinion the credit uh that he deserves you know for a lot of the production that he's worked with because everybody that's coming here has at least mentioned <clears throat> dave salas once Everything. I bet. He's been involved in everything. He's yes. had his hands in everybody's projects. Now, uh, Dominator, I know you're watching. Much love, much respect. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Dominator. I was talking to him today. I think I talked to him yet today, yesterday, and the day before. We always have, like, dope-ass conversations. When mm -hmm. It was funny because I'll tell you how I met him, and then if you can elaborate on how you met him. Okay. okay? I, I was on Instagram, I don't know, maybe three years ago. This was, like, my fifth page. I don't know why. Uh -huh. Last year, 2019, was, like, my 2020. I got all four of my pages deleted. <laughs> oh no! Like I would how? Get, I have no idea. Two thousand followers deleted. They just logged me out. What? Yeah, and then I'm surprised that I, I'm uh, been on this long because uh -huh. even my son would say, "Dad, somebody's like fucking with you big yeah. time." He said, "Cause this, I don't know anybody that has this kind of problems." <laughs> so, so what happened was I re I saw Dominator on one of my pages, mm -hmm. and I was so intrigued by his music, by his singing, and everything. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, he cannot be doing all them beats, you know, <laughs> yeah. like he cannot. So I reached out to him and he actually replied back. Mm -hmm. And ever since we ex exchanged numbers, so uh -huh. I said, one day I want to work with you. So yeah. I told him, I don't even have this podcast or nothing yet. So when we got this podcast, I just reached out and I said, hey, man, I like your new album, bro. Come on down. And ever since then, uh, matter of fact, me and my, me and my boy uh, Johnny right here. We went to go stay with him. Uh, I guess it was a how long ago, John? About a, a month ago. Yeah, I remember. I saw that. Yeah, we went we chill with them. We started working on some beats for the Chicano rap documentary. Mm -hmm. Put it this way: I walked into his room and I did not believe that in in that room and in, with that equipment we were gonna knock out some music. And I'm yeah. Like, Come on, dude. I'm expecting something a little bit more elaborate. Yeah, yeah. You know? But nah, man. The guy's fucking. I, I think he's a fucking genius. Yeah. So how did you meet Dominator? Um, I actually met him through Eat Up and Kool Aid. Okay. Um, we were working on tracks for me, but also at the same time we were working. They were working on that movie Philly Brown. Okay. With Gina Rodriguez, and um, Dominator was writing some stuff for her, and then I got introduced to her, and then I started writing some stuff for her, and then we all kind of started working together. And Dominator produced. Um, the record he helped co-produce and co-wrote the night nurse record that came out on the soundtrack to philly brown okay and then we just started working on more music for me he started getting on more of my songs that we were working with edub so basically through edub you know okay. and then me and dom kept working together 
even beyond that we would always go work together he wanted me to do stuff for his album i wanted him to do stuff on my album so ever since i met dom we've done music you know okay. we've put out we haven't put out as much because he's still got lots of stuff in the vault yeah because it takes him a long time to get this stuff out but when it comes out it's worth it yeah but we, we still have music in the vault but yeah um we never stopped working from then on because you know he's just so multi-talented with the beats and singing and the rapping and the engineering and i like to explore different areas of arrangement myself you know as a vocalist so we just we just clicked really well musically and like i said just when you can create something different with an artist that you don't usually create by yourselves it's a whole new sound that's how it was with juan Gotti. yeah it was just that kind of weird chemistry where you just like you create a whole new types of fusions of songs together that you wouldn't do separately mm -hmm. and i feel like it's the same way with dominator that's dope i'm glad you said that you said uh, it was different i've always i've always said this i don't ever consider myself to be better than anyone mm -hmm. but i just want to be different from everyone mm -hmm. and so i understand when you say it's just different yeah because today my opinion a lot of the music sounds the same a lot of guys are rapping the same i always go back to this i'm an old school head in the 90s everybody west coast had their sound the, the south had their sound east coast had their sound to me, it's almost almost the same sound. And that's why it's hard for me to listen to today's music, mm -hmm. you know? So when I went to go hang out with Dominator and where were they playing around with music? We're talking about Prince and Chaka Khan and SOS band. I'm like, yeah. fuck, where are those bands at today? You know? Mm -hmm. And today people are making more money and these legends are, many of them are broke. Yeah. You know, you know, so, and- Well, that has a lot to do with the old laws too, which is why I'm a district advocate with the recording academy to help change those laws because i mean amazingly enough you know these artists that still get played on the radio legends right. they still don't get paid performance royalties to get played on terrestrial radio it's ridiculous yeah what is that that's, that's like old days so that means if you were the one that performed the record you should definitely get your performance royalties because you made that record by performing it yes because if somebody else could have done if the writers could have done it, then they would have done it. But no, you, there's a reason why you're the performing artist on the record. Right. So, I mean, beyond that, like, that's one of the reasons yeah. that okay. these legends are broke. That's one of them right there. The laws are outdated. We finally passed some, got some laws passed in Congress. I don't know if you heard about it, but the Fair Pay, Fair Play Act that got passed in Congress last year. We, had, I, we have been fighting that. The Recording Academy had been fighting these laws for like 12 years to get them changed. Yeah. And they finally got changed last year. But that one law still has not been changed about artists getting yeah. their performance royalties on terrestrial radio. No, it, it, let me ask you this. Um, do, what, what do you see today's music going? Are you a fan of today's music? When I say about today's music, what you hear on the radio, if you listen, even listen to the radio. I don't listen to the radio. I do listen to Satellite. I listen to Shade 45, I listen to Hip Hop Station, I listen to comedy stations on there, I listen to Satellite. I like some of today's music and then I don't like some of today's music. It's kind of like a toss up with me. I mean, there's a lot of new stuff that I do like. Yeah. Um, but there's not a lot of stuff that I'm just like, wow, I can't even, what are they even saying? They're not even saying anything, you know, I'm just, but that's just me. Right, no, I, a lot of us like, I'm nobody, way. but yeah, it's just like, I, just the substance is not there. You, you know, when you said at Napster, was it 2001, 2002, 2003? Yeah, I think that was there. around there. And uh, er, the music industry was pretty much, I guess, was in shambles because, uh, you know, now they're selling songs for a dollar or people could download on LimeWire for free. For free, okay. Yeah. Um, let me ask you this. Do you see a future in today's radio? I predicted this, and I'm not a prophet, believe me. But last year, uh, 2019, December, I said this. Radio will probably be obsolete in about 10 years. W w what is your take on that? Because you just said you don't listen to radio. I don't, but I, I guess that's a possibility. But no, I don't know, because we still need that live person mm -hmm. on air locally in our city. I feel like that that's still like something you need like locally okay. in every city according to your market you know mm -hmm. i don't think it's gonna die i just 
I mean, I think it's always going to be there. Mm -hmm. But definitely, I mean, streams, you know, more people don't listen to, the, you know, listen to their title, their Spotify, their Pandora, whatever. Of course, they listen to that more. Right, right. But still, like, how else do you promote, like, local concerts or, you know, things happening in your area that has to do with music? So I don't feel like it's going to die necessarily. Okay. Okay. The reason why I felt that is because to answer your question, like when you said, how are you going to promote local concerts? Mm. It's almost like everything's social media now. I think that's... Yeah, that's you know. true. But you still got people that still listen in their car. They want to hear what's going on with the traffic. True. You know, yeah. they want live traffic updates. You're riding home from work. I mean, I just... In the city, I know how that, yeah. how that is in the city. Maybe not in the country, but in the city, you're stuck in your car. Yeah. So... Yeah. I don't feel like it's it's just necessarily going to die down because you still need that local connection to let you know live updates. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Which you can't get on streaming. You right. can't get the local scoop. You can't get what's going on in your city. Like right now with coronavirus, you know, everybody's like, every city is different as far as what they're doing, how they're handling it, how who can get help for what. Because I've seen it. I've been in Houston. I've been in Phoenix. I've been in LA. I've been in all the cities here between here during the pandemic and everybody has to handle it differently they all have their own local governments doing things so you have to keep up with that and that's a good way to keep up with that too yeah. and people more people are listening probably right now because of the pandemic you know what yeah. i mean and yeah. it's giving you those live updates people who can't watch the news because they're at work or whatever you know right so they're listening to the radio okay uh speaking of the pandemic uh, are you guys still on lockdown over there in, in houston or not really yes and no like it's still pretty bad. It's still really bad over there, but the nail salons are still open. You can still dine in inside. Um, barbershop's still open. Okay. So, no, they're not like how it is in LA. Yeah. <laughs> like, not as many restrictions, but it should be. I mean, honestly, they should have more restrictions because it's worse, but. Yeah, yeah. We can't do anything. We're hand our hands are tied locally. The state governor decides everything. Okay, okay. Check this out. We're going to go ahead and press pause right there. We're going to come right back after a break, and we're going to talk about uh, you were down here. You shot a music video. Mm -hmm. And what can people expect from you? And hopefully when this pandemic is over, when, if, if any, can the fans see you perform or whatnot? Yeah. So we'll come back and we'll talk about that. Okay, cool. Okay, everybody, once again, Carolyn Rodriguez in the motherfucking building. Call somebody, text somebody, slap shit out somebody, let them know that she's on Rhodium Radio. And we'll be back in 10 minutes, so make sure you right. go get yourself a Modelo, your popcorn ready. We're going to talk about new music. We'll be back. Yo, what's up? It's Bella. I'm here on Rhodium Radio with my boy Tony A. The Wizard. Stay tuned. Yo, it's Ray Monique on Rhodium Radio with Tony A, the motherfucking wizard. Tune in and subscribe. What's going down, everybody? This is Big Rich G here at Rhodium Radio with Tony A. You guys got to check this out, man. Don't miss out. Tune in. It's your boy, Producer A, out here at Rhodium Radio. It's your boy, Tony A. Make sure y'all subscribe every Sunday, Wednesday, 7 p.m. with the dopest podcast popping in the motherfucking West Coast. Make sure I subscribe. Peace. Yeah, this is Pablito here at Rhodium Radio. I'm here with Tony A, the Wizard. Tune in. What's cracking? It's your boy Noel G in the house, a.k.a. Hector. You guys know what time it is right here with the Rhodium Radio Show, hosted by your boy, Tony A, the Wizard. Ha <laughs> ha! Keep listening. We got something good for you. What's good, beautiful ladies? It's your boy, MC Magic. Tony A, the wizard, you already know. Rhodium Radio Show, turn it up. Yo, what's up, good with y'all? This your boy, Big Prodigy, from the legendary South Central Cartel. And I'm over here chilling with my homeboy, Tony A, the wizard, on the Rhodium Radio Show. Make sure y'all like, share, and subscribe to the page on YouTube. And by the way, check out that interview with yours truly. You dig? Wes. What's up, guys? This is my YouTube. You're watching Royal Radio with Tony A, the Wizard. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Little Silent from BOTG, the voice of the ghetto man. Tune in every Sunday and Wednesday to Rodeon Radio. You already know, hosted by the legend himself, Tony A, the Wizard, man. Don't miss out, man. That should be active out here. What's up, everyone? This is Antonio Palayo. I'm here at Rhodium Radio with Tony A. the Wizard. Make sure to subscribe. 
Yo, what's up everybody? LA Baseball Head here, also known as LAFC Soccerhead, chilling on Roadie Young Radio with my homeboy, Tony A, the Wizard. What it do? DJ Joe Cooley. You chilling with me, DJ Tony A, the Wizard, and Roadie Young Radio. You heard me? What up everyone? This is Alita. Tune in to Rhodium Radio, hosted by Tony A, the Wizard. What up, what up? Susie Q in the motherfucking building. I'm here chilling with Tony A, the motherfucking wizard. Rhodium Radio, YouTube. You guys check it out. Subscribe. Thank it easy. Yo, this is Shady Boy right here with Tony A, the wizard on Rhodium Radio. What's poppin' with it, family? It's your boy, Jokes Loves Life. And you are now tuned in to Rhodium Radio with the one and only Tony A, the motherfucking wizard. That's right. Love life, y'all. This your boy, Wito Trees, Rhodium Radio in the house, Tony A, the Wizard, what's up? What's up, this is your boy, Panther, on Rhodium Radio, tune in with your boy, Tony A, the Wizard, and make sure you hit that subscribe button, yeah, yeah. This is Murray Brumfield, aka Mexicali Slim, Familia Records, and you rolling with Rhodium Radio with Tony A. Yo, what up, it's your boy, DJ Kazel, and we're right here live, Rhodium Radio with my boy, Tony A, the Wizard, that's what's up. Ooh. What's up, you guys? It's your girl, Mariah Avila. I'm here on Rhodium Radio with Tony the Wizard. Please subscribe, like, and comment. Yo, it's cracking. It's your homeboy, Mr. Motherfucking Junebug. And you just tuned in to Rhodium Radio with Tony A, the motherfucking wizard. And don't forget, subscribe to the channel. You know. Juvalet Rasa, it's your homeboy, Hypnotic, right here in Rhodium Radio with Tony A, the wizard. Make sure you subscribe, like, and do all that. Don't forget to comment. Much love. Yo, 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 this is Grinch Brown on Rhodium Radio with Tony A, the Wizard. Keeping this shit popping, all West Coast, all love. Shout out to my raza, we getting it. Hey, look, this is Chunks, the San Diego All Star. You are now tuned in to Rhodium Radio right here with Tony A, the Wizard. Tap in. Oh, man, we right here live on the Rhodium Radio with the homie Tony A. Royal T, no profile record. Oh, man. Yo, call somebody, text somebody, slap the shit out of somebody. Let them know that Rodian Radio is live up in this biatch. Rodian Radio. Visit your deal on the Rhodium Radio. Grab a seat on my knee with Tony A, the wizard.
tear shit up. Hey, yo, D, you got a level? D, hit record, man. I bet. My name is the Crofts, the C-R-A-W-F-O-R-D, the poet high C. Tony A, the witch, just as cool as a visit. Thinking out of time, stabbing pussy like a lizard. Ooh, so sorry, homie, I didn't mean to say that. Steve is in the house. Come on, watch you play that funky dope beat? You know you gotta throw me some stylish ass crop coming straight from the rodeo. You are now about to witness Tony A. Get funky. I Welcome back everybody to Rhodium Radio episode 80 and once again I want to encourage you to subscribe to the Freaky Talk podcast on uh, YouTube. Freaky Talk podcast, you can also follow us on Freaky Talk podcast on Instagram. We're going to be starting that on a Friday, the third week of August. I think it's the 21st if I'm correct. Uh, we'll be talking to talk about the paranormal spooky ghost story type of shit. So make sure you guys subscribe. I, w- I at least want to go live with at least about a thousand subscribers. I w- I'm almost at about 600. We've only been promoting it for about a week and a half and so far so good. So uh, other than that, you can buy the mixtapes. Uh, you can download them to your phone or you can buy them for those of you that still like hard copies. Uh, the documentary at documentary.com. Also the High C album that I released or, or that I uh, produced in 1991. You can also buy that one as well. Everybody's orders have already been shipped. So without further ado, once again, Carolyn Rodriguez. ¿Cómo estás? Muy, muy bien. So far so good? Yeah. So. I had to put my hair back. It's time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. So you know what? Um, I was uh, looking on your page and on your stories and you guys were filming a video mm-hmm. for the public that may not know. Um, fill us in. What was that song? What can people expect? When can the video drop? And was it fun? Well, um, I'm not sure which video you're talking about because I've actually shot two videos. Okay, then tell uh, them about both. One of them is the next single that's called Real As They Come. That's just me. And we shot it at the Urban Flower Company, which is actually the place that I collabed with for my first CBD strain. Okay. I have my own CBD strain of flower called Medicine Girl, and I have my own syrup called Caroline. Hmm. They're both really good stuff. But we filmed the video there, and then the same videographer, Q, um, that did our video came out to L.A., and we ended up doing another song, totally different type of song, started out as a cover, and ended up as a mainly Spanish song now. Okay. With, like, some kind of Latin tropical fusion. I don't know. It just ended up being a totally different record, and we decided to shoot the video for it while I was here. And um, I wrote this, uh, it's a duet, and it's me and Dominator. So it's a duet singing. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So totally different type of vibe than what I normally do. I don't do these type of songs, but for some reason this came out this way. And we literally started this song like eight, nine years ago. And it was just a cover then, a cover song. Mm -hmm. And now it's not. Now it's just turned into something else. The beat changed, everything changed. Okay. <laughs> now, and from the people that got to, a chance to listen to this song, what is the response you're getting? Everybody says it's a really good record. They're really surprised. They're not, they're kind of like shockingly 
surprised because it's not the type of record that I normally do, especially not Dominator. He doesn't really do Spanish stuff either. But for some reason, it's just like people are really feeling it. Yeah. Okay. Now, is it bilingual, like back and forth, English and Spanish, or is it all? No, it's it's bilingual. It's like certain parts are in English and certain parts are in Spanish. But it's probably, I would say, like 70% Spanish. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. Is that the one? I hope I don't. I hope I don't get it wrong. Are you wearing like a polka dot dress? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the one I was. Yeah, it's called for. tonight. Okay, tonight. Mm -hmm. And when can people expect that uh, the song to be released and the video to be released? Tonight. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I'm gonna drop real as they come on August sixth. So I plan on dropping tonight, um, either a month from then or three weeks from then, okay. just depending on where we are on our on our tour because we're touring but not like concert touring. We're touring like mobile pop-up touring. Yeah, you were telling me mm -hmm. that you just bought a bus, if mm -hmm. I'm correct. C can you share a little bit about that? And, and why did you do that? Oh gosh, why? Uh, I've been wanting to do it for years, honestly. Um, I had always dreamed of being able to do it because I used to do that in my car and I used to like meet up with people off of Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat. And that's how I do my meet and greets, but I was doing it like in my car. And I thought if I had like, a big RV, a big bus where it was like advertising me, I could do even better. I could do even more and I could actually stay out in these places and not have to like keep moving around and actually like be there for a little while. And I, I've always wanted it, but until the pandemic, I hadn't thought like, let's jump on it right now. It was right before the pandemic that I decided I was gonna go for it. Okay. And right before the quarantine, right before they locked us all down. And then the place that we were gonna buy it from actually shut down, the whole place shut down in Houston. So it was kind of like, okay. So I was just kind of like sitting back, like, all right, what's going to happen now? We were all on lockdown. This is like April. And finally I was like, I'm going to apply for one of those, you know, loans, the SBA loans, and I'm going to use it to get the bus. I'm just going to go ahead and do it because I don't know when I'm going to ever be able to perform again. We were the first people to start working and we're going to be the last people to start working as far as concerts. Cause that's what we live off of is large gatherings. Yeah. And that's like, the last thing we're going to be able people are going to be able to do yeah so i was like you know this is pretty much all i can do people still need us they the people still need us to come to them they still need that dope served to them yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean they they still need some kind of human contact and we are putting like safety protocols in place you know people have to wear masks we're only doing one or two people at a time you have to social distance i mean we're still taking safety protocols but yes. It's still, it's still, I think it's going to be good because we'll be able to go out and see people and see our people, the people that support and buy the music. And even people that don't know, now they'll know. You know, it's like, you're not going to school. You know, you're not working. A lot of people aren't working. So we'll just pop up in your city. You know, you have more time on your hands, yeah. basically. And, and we have more time on our hands. Okay. So it's going to be a little more one-on-one. -on -one. It's actually going to be better for the fan because... They get more one-on-one -on -one with us. Uh, meeting, greet, one-on-one. -on -one yeah, -on -one yeah, it's good because, you know, we can only have like one or two people. So I think it's going to be better that they're going to get that more of a personal experience. We might have some VIP meetups, you know, where there might be a few of us that go hiking or something like that. And they'll get to go hiking and they'll get like a package, a promo package with like some merchandise in there too. So we're working some stuff out. We're heading to Colorado first for the month of August. So we'll be in Colorado. We'll be in Pueblo and Denver and Greeley and, you know, all through Colorado. Um, yeah. I mean, we don't know next, but we're probably going to definitely go to Chicago after that. Um, those were some of the places I was going to perform at before they canceled <laughs> everything. I was on tour with uh, Quinto Sol, who, by the way, just dropped a new video. Much, much respect to Quinto Sol. Um, they put me on a tour with them, me and Miss Crazy, and we were going everywhere. And I was going to markets that I knew had fans, but I had never performed there before. And right. just shut us down like the whole year. So I think this is going to be a good a good way to like reconnect with our fans in a different way and kind of keep things going. And also we're going to film it. So we'll be putting out episodes for people to see how it's like, we're going to be filming. We have like GoPros on the bus. We're just going to be filming every minute. So oh. we'll take the cool stuff. Yeah. Maybe some of the, the drama too, <laughs> you know, there's always drama on the road, but oh. no, it's uh, me and Athena. Um, I'm going to have my boy, Lil Smitty on there. He's very good with videography. Um, he's going to be doing all the video stuff for everything. So, I mean, we're going to be coming to your town. We might even have Juan Gotti doing tattoos soon on there. So, but we're going to keep it safe. That'll work. You know what? Um, I think it's important that during this time, because uh, somebody told me, you know, this may be the most 
a terrible year uh, out of this century, you know? <laughs> out of everybody's <laughs> life. Yeah. So <clears throat> this would be a time to pretty much get creative, yeah. to work, and to uh, uh, creatively find out how you can get out there with the public like mm -hmm. yourself, okay? Because sad to say, I know rappers that are just staying home and they're just saying, I'm just waiting for this to blow over. Like, nah, dude. No. Like, you can't do that. We need music. Yes, yes, absolutely. Music still needed. And I'm thankful for social media because we can connect, yeah. you know. That's helped that. a lot. Yes, absolutely. So, uh, uh, Like this, YouTube. Yes, yes. We're able to connect now. Thank God for YouTube. Mm -hmm. So so now um, you said in next, well, next month, I guess in a week. you got In a week. Yeah, it's coming up quick. Ooh, yeah, we're taking off on the 7th. Okay. Now this song... You said uh, give it about a month. Uh, the video, give it about a month. Is there an album to follow that? Yes. I'm okay. actually releasing my very first album through Dope House Records. For the really? first time. Yeah. Okay. See, now that may be shocking to fans <laughs> out there. You know, because they're saying, okay, you're married to SPM and this is your first album through Dope House? Like, yeah. A lot of people think that I, I, I was uh, signed with them or dropped albums through them, but I never did. I was going to. My Medicine Girl album, I was going to drop through them, but it never happened. But uh, I was going to, but I never did. I always put out my own projects. So this will be the first one that Dope House Records is actually putting out. It's called The Song Whisperer. Wow, that, wow. I bet you that throws a monkey wrench in every, what everybody else thought. They probably just thought yeah. Dope House, Dope House, Dope House. Yeah. It wasn't, wow, that's interesting. No, that's I'll a, always represent Dope House, you know? That's, yeah. That's, I wouldn't be here. You yeah. know what I mean? And, and, um, this album, how many songs? Is it an EP and features? And uh, who are the producers? Oh, man. I always like to work with a bunch of different producers. Every album, I feel like I expand more and more into different producers. And then guys will send me beats. And I'll just end up just loving them. And just, you know, I like to always work with different people. Um, but on this album, uh, of course, I have uh, have lots of different producers. Um just trying to think back at all the songs. Um, I've been working with Bruce Bang a lot in mm -hmm. Houston. Uh, he did a couple beats for me. Smitty actually, he produces. He made a beat for me on there. Um, I guess you could say I co-produce one of them because I kind of say what I want to hear, the sounds right. that I want to hear, like some co-production stuff and like make it from scratch type of deal. Um, yeah, I just, I mean, Payne probably will produce a track. I think I'm still putting in a track from Pain. And then some some guys that just sent me stuff. Uh, Jay Menez is the guy who produced Real As They Come. So he's a new producer that I'm working with. Um, it's always somebody new every time. And then I have some of the other ones that I you know always work with. Like I still need to do something with Wessel G. He, he's a great producer that I like working with. Ill Faded is another producer I like working with. Um, but every album I start working with new ones. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You know, I saw on YouTube uh, that you did a song with. Um, I hope I, I I don't butcher his name. Uh, Boy Boy West Coast. It, something West Coast. West Coast. Um, I did a video or just. Yeah, you did a video a song with him. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think that's his name. I can actually look it up. What's the name of the song? I don't remember the name of the song. What were we doing in the video? What's going on? Um, he's wearing glasses. <laughs> okay. Um, shoot. You're just all throughout the video. Boy, Boy West Coast. I think that's his name. Is that his name, you guys? What? Yeah, Boy, Boy West Coast. Can, can, can you look it up while, while we talk? I've, I don't, I didn't do a video with somebody boy named boy. that. Boy, Boy? I don't even know who that is. Yeah, but uh, I saw it unless it was a good lookalike. It, must, it has to be. I don't know <laughs> who that is. Love boy, Boy West Coast. Does it say her name? Mm -hmm. uh, this is just his IG. So okay. I never worked I'll with him. The, oh, on wow. YouTube. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look it up on YouTube and then get back to us, please. I, I was like, I don't know who that is. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, and I know you did some songs once again with uh, Dominator, Criminal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Criminal. Uh, yeah. Um, there was somebody else you mentioned. I'm sorry. Chino Grande, King Chino Little Grande, G. King Little G. Okay. MC Magic. It was crazy. Uh, those are all songs that have done really, really well. Okay. Is there anybody like, if you will, like, Man, I there's I want to collab with this person, you know. Uh, uh, can you name some of those? If there's any at all, hmm. I think there's a few people I want to collab with. I always said I wanted to collaborate with Reverie. Okay. Um, she's really dope. She has a different style that I 
that makes me reminiscent of like stuff that I used to write because I'm a hip hop head. Yeah. You know, like true hip hop. Yeah. Fiend. You know, I'm, I'm about lyrics and lyrical content. And she has some really good lyrical content, and I just feel like I could, I could work with, well with her. That's one person I'd always wanted to collab with. Um, I'm trying to think about it off the top of my head. I, I would like to work with Little Rob. Okay. I think he'd be good to work with too. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I could see that. I, I, I think it'll, it'll. it'll and Zero, good. I've always wanted to work with Zero. I, any East Coast artist, since you really like. Oh, uh, I'm a Nas fan, so of course that would be like the ultimate thing <laughs> to work with Nas. Nas, okay. You like you're a Jay Z. Let me throw some names. Jay Z. I like Jay Z. Okay. I was I I was still more of a Nas fan. Okay. What about uh, like a Fat Joe, Big Pun? Obviously, rest in peace, Big Pun. Yeah, Pan. Fat Joe would be really dope. That would be cool. Huh. Uh, yeah. That'll work. Like me, uh, even though I love East Coast because I grew up on that, mm -hmm. I love West Coast. I would like to do some stuff like. Uh, for me, Dubsy. Mm. I love Dubsy shit. So, yeah, Dubsy's dope. I mean, people will say, well, why not Ice Cube? But why not Drake? Because I did mixtapes with them. So I kind of already been rubbed elbows with them. But mm. guys like Dubsy, I, I like. As a matter of fact, let me go ahead and say this. that uh, uh, Dubsy in the future will be here. Mm. But a lot of artists canceled with me. And I understand it simply because of the pandemic. They were just afraid to come out. Yeah. So I have to respect yeah. that. You know, uh, some people, I don't want to just say cancel. They just rescheduled, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and I just throw another name out there. And a lot of people, I don't like to do this because other podcasters try to run to them. Can I Zoom you before you go on Rodeo Radio? Yeah. Believe me, they told me. So I'll just tell you after so that way they don't have okay, to. Okay, okay. Did you look That's it up? Not. No, there is a video that looks like her, but... Oh, my God. I don't think it's her, but it okay. like it's not me. See, <laughs> it, see, see. Really? Yeah, I had the blonde hair. And... Oh no. Okay, so that's why I thought. Does I... it sound like me? No. I, I oh, okay. It, yeah, cause I saw it and I was uh -huh. just like, oh wow, she did a song <laughs> with this guy. Okay. I have some twin or somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh good. No disrespect to Bo Bo West Coast. No, not at all. I, I just didn't know. I was like, I have no idea that, but maybe it's this. I was like, maybe change his name or something. I, I didn't want to. Like say no, I don't know, and then it's like, what? You don't remember the song? I'm like, oh. so I was like, just tell me the name of the song. I can, I, I can go by the song. You know, okay. You know, let me ask you this, okay? Because uh -huh. you do a, pretty much predominantly all singing, mm -hmm. other than, other than in the very beginning when you said you did a rap, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, are you ever gonna do any more rap? I, I rap, yeah. I still rap on every album. I still rap. Okay. okay. Some of my like hit songs that I've had are raps too. That okay. I perform at shows, so like my my show is usually a mixture of singing and rapping. Okay, now now everybody's a little bit different, and but I asked this question to see how everybody prepares. When you get ready to go out there and sing, is there anything that you do? Um, for an example, I, I had an opportunity to work with Tina Marie, mm -hmm. and um, you know I had never worked with anybody of that caliber. This was a 1997. Mm -hmm. She walks in, tiny little little thing. Rest in peace, Tina Marie. Yeah. Um, and I asked her, you know, my goofy self, you want a beer? You know, uh, uh, you want some wine? And she just said, no, I'll just take some warm tea. Mm -hmm. And that was it. She drank warm tea. She went in there, warmed up literally for about 30 minutes. And then she said, go. But I recorded all those 30 minutes of her warming up. And I thought all of them were perfect. But I'm not a singer. Yeah, they're not. Yeah, they're not. Right. So do you do anything like that? Or do you just go out there and just sing? Uh, when I'm doing a show, I just go out there and sing. But okay. if I'm in the studio, I do warm up every time. Okay. I'll run through it and run through it until I know I feel it. I'm like, all right, I'm warm now. You know, now I know. It's just kind of like a feeling, like just warm up until you feel ready, until you hear it and it sounds right. Can, can a singer listen to another woman sing on a record and say she didn't warm up or you can tell almost or... Since I'm not a rapper, I so I'm not a I, singer. I, I really never thought about, oh, she didn't warm up. I guess that's not even something I even think about when I mm -hmm. hear something. I'm either just like, either you can sing or you can't <laughs> kind of thing, you know? But I've never really thought like, oh, she didn't warm up. No, I never really thought about that. Uh, for an example, uh, 19, I want to say 98. You could tell you're getting old when you remember years. Uh, um, <laughs> I'm over here. Remember, 1998, I hired this one girl to come in and sing. I read her the lyrics that my rapper had wrote, mm -hmm. and I said, can you sing this? She kind of like, oh, no, 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 Okay, cool. She goes, goes in there, and I'm thinking she's going to warm up. She goes, yeah. go ahead. She knocks it out. 
But I knew she could have done better. Yeah. So I told her, hey, listen, uh, did you go run it by? She goes, no, I, think I usually do it on my first or two takes. Uh -huh. And I was like, that was it? And she was like, yeah. So she came out. We went ahead and ran with it. Thank God it wasn't my record. I produced a song, but it was coming on his album. Mm -hmm. And um, every time I listen to it, I'm like, she didn't even warm up. <laughs> You know, so it kind of still irks me a little bit. So that's why I like to ask different singers. Some people say, you know, uh, yeah, uh, uh, I like to warm up. Some people say, no, I don't warm up. I just go, mm -hmm. you know. So I just wanted to know how different singers do their, do their, uh, their recordings, if you will. So Yeah, on that one, I, I do warm up. But it's just kind of like I just do it by ear until I feel like I'm ready. Okay. I just run through the song over okay. and over again, the parts that I'm doing, recording. And then once I feel like I sound warm enough, then then I'll keep it. But I know back in the day, at the beginning, I did used to go in there and just knock it out. Wasn't thinking about warming up when I was younger. <laughs> That's one thing I did not think about. I didn't think about protecting my vocal cords. I didn't think about any of that. I was smoking blunts. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just killing my eighth octave. I used to have an eighth octave, be able to go up there like Mariah Carey, the eighth wow. octave in high school. And then I started smoking cigarettes and started smoking blunts and, start, and just killed it. Didn't realize until it was gone that I was doing that to myself. And then I started really caring about my vocal cords, you know, and, you know, making sure that you're hydrated and making sure you don't drink caffeine. You know, you start reading up on all that stuff. Tea is always good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, you had mentioned that you had a, a, a strain, a C, an NCBD. Yeah. Okay. Can you share a little bit about that? What can people buy it or purchase it or look it up? Well, if you want to purchase it, you can purchase it at theurbanflowercompany.com. <laughs> it's the medicine girl flower you can smoke it's got like a built-in grinder uh -huh. uh, you can buy an eighth of that and it's cbd all cbd it has less than 0.3 percent thc which means it's legal in all okay. 50 states so um i have that and then i have the syrup the actual cbd syrup that people like to it looks kind of like lean okay yeah it looks just like lean so it's called caroline and it also kind of gives you a real calming effect too if you pour it up you know Okay, mm -hmm. that's cool. Uh, any apparel? Oh yeah, I always sell apparel. I've been selling stuff on my on my website uh, for years, and we'll have it on the bus too. So, but always dopegirlmusic.com is where you can get everything. Dopegirlmusic.com. Mm -hmm. Now, what are you most active on? Your Twitter, your Instagram. Uh, I don't know if you have a Facebook, a TikTok, or. Man, I'm currently kicked out of my Facebook right now. Why posting too many memes? No, <laughs> I don't even post memes. I don't know what happened. I think someone has hacked into my account or something because they made me verify my identity. So I haven't been on Facebook in like a week. I usually use Facebook to keep up with like coronavirus shit. Like it gives me the statistics. That's what I'm on Facebook for, looking at statistics usually or looking at people's birthdays. I missed my godson's birthday and I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I've gotten so used to Facebook letting me know whose birthday it is. Yes, yes. <sighs> Sorry, baby Nas. His name is baby Nas. Okay. I forgot his birthday. Yeah. So I was just like, oh my God, I can't believe Facebook is the one been keeping me up on this. I realized that because I forgot. Right. So yeah, I haven't been on Facebook for the past week. I don't know what's happening, but I do have a Facebook page um, under Carolyn Rodriguez, but I'm usually on, I'm on Instagram like all the time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. I know my daughter was trying to get me to go on Twitter, but my, my boy John's on Twitter for our uh, documentary page and Mm -hmm. I just find that boring. Like I just, I just don't get it. Somebody recently told me to get on TikTok to promote my stuff, but I don't know anything about that. Are you on TikTok? I'm on there. I don't know. I don't know why I'm on there. But I've been on there for like four or five years since it started. I just don't really do much on TikTok because I'm just not into like let me learn to dance and put. I mean, I just, I don't know. It's not my thing. I feel like I'm too old for TikTok. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Now you know what? Uh, we're coming down to a close. So I wanted to ask you. Uh, um, a couple of things about SPM. Uh, is he looking at any type of release? Any type? What, what, what's what's the word on that? If you if you can share any. Oh yeah, I mean he's up for parole in twenty twenty four. So okay. And how was that looking from what you know of? I mean he doesn't have anything like that would prevent him. I don't think. Mm -hmm. um, I really don't know. Okay. It's hard to tell because the way the system in Texas works, I really don't know. Um, I've heard from lots of people that usually you get like your first date or whatever, like they tell you no. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't know. I think yeah. every person is different. And I'm pretty sure that he will just because, you know, he's able to afford a good lawyer or whatever to help him and make sure that he's that he's on point with everything. But really, I mean, he's trying to get exonerated before that. So okay. hopefully, 
you know, or maybe it'll happen around the same time. I'm not sure. He's coming out with a book, a documentary, um, eventually a movie that explains all that stuff. It's coming out in, on October the 5th with his album, The County Boys, which is the one I told you that he did with the guys in the county when he was in the county back in 2000. It was all over the phone. Wow. Yeah. All over the phone? All over the phone. Wow. Yeah. I guess that was going to be my next question because... Uh, since he's been, in, you know, incarcerated, there's been records released. Was that stuff that he had already recorded or? Who knows? Who knows, right? We'll we just find that. things. <laughs> hey, we found this verse. Oh, my God. We found this entire song. It's just yeah, magic. We'll, just, we'll leave it at that. So uh, so the fans can expect uh, in October. Uh-huh. Okay. That's good. That's good. Uh, you know who we had here? Um, Pablo Nunez. Mm-hmm. Okay. Came over here and... Um, he reached out to me and he had told me, you know, uh, one thing I have to respectfully say about him that he was very respectful in the moment that I met him. Um, he told me, would you ever interview an actor? Mm-hmm. And I said, sure, you know, no problem. Send me, you know, like your bio or whatnot. Mm-hmm. And he sent me a bunch of pictures and I saw a picture of Jesus, uh, you know, a guy that looked like the Dos Equis man. And every picture, he had sent me like 20 pictures. But in the last picture, I saw SPM, mm-hmm. okay? So I said, Okay, wait a minute. This is interesting. Why is this guy sending me a picture of SPM? Mm-hmm. So I sent him my number and I said, call me. So he calls me and I go, why would you send me a picture of SPM? So he told me the whole story. Oh, yeah. On mm-hmm. how, how we met SPM. Mm-hmm. So um, I was supposed to have Angel Aviles from Mi Vida Loca here. Okay. So I, I thought, let me bring two actors in that day. Yeah. Last minute, she Cancel. cancels. Yeah. So I said, dude, I said, okay. Let me go ahead and get you in here, and I'll just give you the full two hours interview. Mm-hmm. So pretty much that's how it, hap- how it happened. So I said, I'm going to use that uh, the picture where I guess you played SPM in the video, mm-hmm. but we're not going to put SPM. We're not going to hashtag. We're not going to say anything. Mm-hmm. We're just going to put special guest. Mm-hmm. And I figured that was the only way I can get people to tune in. Mm-hmm. So because I know that he has a fan base, mm-hmm. but uh, one thing that, and I have to say this and on his behalf, on the Pablo Nunez that he said, I don't want anybody to think that I'm here pretending, you know, I'm SPM because I respect the man, I respect his family and everything. Mm-hmm. No problem. Mm-hmm. So uh, I just wanted to clear that up because I know SPM is your husband and there was no, uh, at least no disrespect on our part. So mm-hmm. I hope none was taken. So Nah. Okay. That's cool. So Pablo Nunez, much respect, brother. So wish you luck in your acting career. But uh, yeah, everything went well. I don't know if you, ever, you got a chance to see it. I didn't. I didn't. I. I really. I'm bad. I'm just so bad. I don't get. I just didn't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, you know what? At this time, is there any shout outs? Any maybe anything I didn't ask you? I don't know. Like it's hard to think of what you didn't ask me until like 30 minutes down the road, and I'm like, oh shit, I forgot. Yeah, I should have brought that up. Huh? Yeah. Um, um, I feel like I brought up everything I needed to bring up. Okay. But um, shout outs just. I mean, pretty much everybody who's always supported me, you know, like yeah. everyone, um, everybody who's kept it real, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm very much on that, like keeping it real. Like, I just, I just want people to be real with me, you know? Um, and I appreciate all the people that have been all these years because um, shout out to everybody who ha- has helped me along the way because you cannot do this alone, you know? Um, you need help. everybody needs help yes. everybody needs a team and it's really important to have a team so shout out to the team we're going to take over in our bus shout out to you know athena who has been there for me like as a manager friend everything else for the past few years you know so hopefully we're going to be able to take things to the next level and like show the people what we really go through it's not all glitz and glamour like people try to make it seem and i'm just not about that you know right. like i want people to see that there's the reality of what it is you know like it's more relatable anyway people can't relate to that you know they want i guess they want to and that's why it's popular to watch but at the end of the day they can't relate to that right bentley's and car they can't right that's not what most people are are doing that's not what most people have and i agree with you 100 percent, simply because when i see and, and and believe me i don't say this as a put down yeah. But when I see a rapper in a mansion driving in a Bentley, throwing money at the screen. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I can't, I don't live like that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so if anybody sees my documentary, you can see that I kept it hood 
the whole time, the yeah. whole three hours, <laughs> right? Know, so that people can relate to it. Yeah. I, I don't ever want to make myself up here because it makes it almost seem like I'm unreachable or untouchable. I want to be able to be right here yeah. with the people. And that, that's what you're doing when you could go out with this bus. You're going to be, it's more of an intimate uh, meet and greet mm -hmm. and people are going to get to know you and that's where you gain more fans. Yeah, I think know? so too. So. Just so they can know like, and, and I think a lot of times like the real fans are the fans that really like listen to the lyrics and stuff. They know that I came from nothing. They know that all, all that it's taken for me to get where I'm at now, which still isn't where I want to be. Yeah. So it's like those people know, but then you have the fans that they just started listening like on your third album ago or something, you know, I put out so many albums. So it's like, right. you really want to take them so they can see that, you know, yeah this is this is me this is where i came from like i can relate to you on this level and that's why subconsciously you're relating to my music you know so yeah i think it's gonna be great awesome awesome so other than that uh you know what i just want to tell you uh thank you very much for allowing me and giving me the honor and the privilege to uh, have you sit across from me and allowing me to interview you so it's been an honor thank you uh, for having me uh, thank you very very much uh whatever you need i'd like to tell every artist that comes here that if there's anything that I can do to help mm -hmm. you, uh, you know, further your career, whatever I can do, that's what I'm here for. So, uh, th once again, thank you very much. No, I appreciate the time. It's an honor to be here. Awesome. Okay, everybody. Uh, you know what? Uh, a lot of people have been asking me. Uh, uh, I just interviewed royalty on Sunday, a couple of days ago. Okay. Um, yes, he will be back for part two. For part two. Ooh. So, be expecting uh, royalty to be back. I know you're watching, big boy. So, you'll be back. <laughs> Other than that, um, once again, Freaky Tales Podcast, make sure you follow us on Instagram. Make sure you follow us on YouTube. Uh, we're going to go live possibly in about uh, fe February, Friday the 21st. Okay. Uh, pick up the mixtapes. I'm running out. Um, Documentary.com. Other than that, John motherfucking Elkins for doing everything. Uh, I couldn't be here without my team. So I want to thank John motherfucking Elkins. And I want to thank everybody that's been here. Brothers, uh, um, um jimmy jimmy urban kings urban kings memo memo, memo. uh much love much respect to everybody uh sunday now sunday in about four days from now um i'm gonna have a i don't ju i just don't want to consider him a west coast legend because i think he's a legend period but for uh, uh lack of better words i'll just say the west coast legend he's a dj producer percussionist he in my record in, in at least in my opinion, probably the guy who started the Chicano rap sound. And that's all I'm going to say. Make sure you call somebody, text somebody, slap shit out somebody, let them know that we're going to be in the building on Sunday with a legend. You don't want to miss out. Carolyn Rodriguez, thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Igualmente. Safe travels. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night.